It was pretty sick. All right, here we go. Songs, songs live. Play it, doggy. It's pretty cute. Do you like it? Yeah. I thought you'd like it. It's a nice morning song. I do like Sam Evian, it's a really nice voice. SoundCloud. Okay. I'm gonna switch probably, but I don't pay for Spotify right now. Why does why does I pay for let's pay for both? Why does everybody? Oh, okay, that's cool. Why does everybody have Spotify and not SoundCloud? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's the interface that people like better, or it's just like they maybe they were on the scene first, and people feel like they have more mu more music. Like Joe Rogan. They're both, they're both kind of fucked. Yeah, that's a good point. They, they got audio books and Joe Rogan. I was wondering, I was wondering which one, yeah, pays their artists better. But they probably are both. Is they're both good? fucked. Yeah. Yeah, they're both fucked. But it's just, it's just but like. But I, I also buy music on Bandcamp too, so I make up for it. Okay, hear me out. Do you think it's cut? Do you think it's similar to this, the like ski and snowboard industry where? Only the top like five, ten percent of riders, not not even that. You know, it's like I don't know what it is. Maybe like two percent actually have a living, mm -hmm. a living ma wage. But then anyone who's like semi pro, like fuck, they're like pretty in a tricky spot, or they're like having to devote so much time to the sport, but they're like just making enough money to like live. All right. 
American. American is pretty, pretty spot on. Yeah. I, it's weird it, how yeah. it's like that. Because it's, it's, it's both, they're both kind of like art forms, I guess, where it's like this abstract idea you're trying to like put value on. Money off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, one sec. I'll be right back. Yeah, I don't know. Fucking mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sucks, but such is life. I guess if everybody, if it was that easy, then everyone would do it. That's it. I feel like I found way. I found like the alternative option of like, because I wanted to be a professional athlete of some sort, and I basically just like became my own sponsor. <laughs> how? How, how like do you creating do that? a creating a business that's like around um needing someone to be a an athlete and then paying uh, them. The arborist? Yeah. Yeah, totally. It re you like it requires the the same skills that you need to to do the athletic thing or like the sport. Exactly. Yeah. But then you just also have to manage a business and take phone calls and do all that other shit that's not fun <laughs> yeah then if you, and if you hire someone to do that then you just watch your profits get eaten yeah exactly i, think I probably could have done that if i bought the business on my own i probably would have been able to afford that but i got a business partner so yeah wasn't um, i was just gonna ask wasn't he handling a lot of that side of it and then you were like the one actually doing the work yeah, he's doing the um, he's doing the computer stuff. So I still gotta like do quotes and answer um, the phone. I right. got the business phone. Right. Yeah. But yeah. when when's the date? When are you out of that? Or you're out of it right now? Um, it should be like this year. I'm kind of like I'm I'm thinking it's probably because he's just a little bit like. I think he's scared. He's just young, so he, and he's kind of deliberating, like not oh, deliberating. He's just like, um, he's just he's not jumping into it really quick. Like he could be, he could buy it, but like straight away. But I think he just likes the fact that we're here and he can still learn from us. And um, so he's just kind of like waiting to sell it before he's like, or to buy it before he's he's waiting for him to to feel more confident, I guess. Yeah, okay, that's cool. And, like, you, mm. you're you going to start... When did you say you're going to start school? Mm. I'm already in school. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, cool. So it's, like, part-time, and you have plenty of time to help help your business partner. What's his name? Again, I forget. It's actually... It's, it's full-time school. Oh. So... You're, you're just the boss. Pretty, pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, last semester was pretty, last semester was pretty gnarly, but it's like, um, this, the thing is my, um, it's not too demanding where we're at now with like the business. Cause, um, you've got, I've got an apprentice, I've got like a contract climber. And so I'm only on the tools two days a week. Nice. And then I just answer the phone calls and, um, do quotes on my other days off. Yeah. So I can I can manage kind of studying and stuff on those days. Right on. So you just you're gonna go hard until your buddy, the business partner, like buckles down and takes it on. And he's gonna buy you out. But... Well, Sam, hey, Sam's gonna buy both of us out. Oh fuck yeah, that's ideal. Yeah, yeah totally. I think because we're both kind of ready to move on and. Yeah. I was gonna, cause if you're selling to your business partner, then you'd be like butting heads, like you'd be like trying to overvalue, and he'd be trying to undervalue. And it's like, that, yeah, that, you totally. Can see that being a headache. So if it's just one person buying the whole thing. Like, fuck yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's ideal. So wait, I'm gonna, and, um, I'm gonna cut you off. I want to bring it back to your comment about, um, like, back in the day, you always kind of had the like pro, pro something. 
going on. Like, I, mm-hmm. growing up with you and, like, seeing you skateboard and stuff, dude, you, like, hands down, you, you've, you, hands down, you've had the most influence on my skiing, like, than anybody else. Uh-huh. So, like, I don't know, that says a lot, but it, just, just for me, I guess, cause, but, like, yeah, you, just your approach. Well, we just rode together so much. Yeah, I know, but that, like, the, the approach you had, like, it was just so obvious how much fun you are having, and it was, like, like, so much more fun than anybody else was kind of the important part. But it, it was weird, though, because uh-huh. it was just, it was, like, regular you. You're kind of like that in life anyways. But but having mm. that having that on the mountain with me while I was, like, you know, learning how to ski, but, like, figuring out what free riding actually was and having you as the yeah. influence was, like, so perfect. Aww, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, straight from the heart, man. <laughs> like, I, it's no bullshit. That was, like, you. Uh, yeah. I think that's why you never went pro right though because like you figured out pretty early on like as soon as you change that dynamic and ha- start like having mm-hmm. such such like a defined goal and then it ruins the artistic side yeah i definitely was like i remember like every time the comp was on i'd be like on the other side on short side staring down at the comp going like fuck i'm so happy i'm just here with my friends <laughs> yeah. Just hanging out, getting some mad turns, and people are just like waiting for their turn to. Yeah, you see go them off. shivering, like trying to get stay yeah. warm. What the fuck are you doing up there, you idiots? What? What? Can you think of any like comp in particular? Um, I remember like when there was a rail comp going on, and we were kind of like sitting up at the, um, at the shack, like sparking up <laughs> just about to drop into a, a short side with like no tracks just being like yeah we made the right decision <laughs> yeah mm. have you been in any comps i forget yeah i was at uh it was like a competition at red mountain i think i got third place was and it? i was like in, in with shondar and and the, one of those other montreal guys got first shondar got second was that the like the rail set up downtown? No. It was like, there's like three jumps and then rails at the end. Oh, in the park. Mm-hmm. So you, what were you, like 25 or something maybe? No, not even. I was probably like 19. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, that was like... I think I was still Yugi at that point. Maybe 18, 19. Right. But you got third though. Mm. That's pretty good. What tricks did you do? I think I did, I, um, the first jump I did, uh, frontside three with a reverse tail grab. So it was like a pretty fucking ramp, like weird grab where you're like, it's almost like a seatbelt where your, your opposite hand grabs your opposite tail. Yeah, yeah, like wrap around kind of mm. deal. Mm-hmm. I did one of those, and then I think it was just like, um, a front five and a back five. Or maybe a seven at the end. I think I tried to do a back seven tail grab. And kind of like didn't quite stop it. Three, three, it was still pretty close. Three jumps, three jumps, and you you don't know whether you did two fives or a five and then a seven. It was one of those combos. Mm, mm-hmm. And a three at the start. Yeah, sick. I, I feel, for mm. me personally, I'd be more stoked on seeing two fives like one one way one the other way as long as they're like pretty yeah. much equally clean like mm. a, a seven mm. sick but the, if you're doing them all this okay if the seven was the opposite way that'd be dope too but if you're spinning all three uh whatever mm. the same way then it's not as cool as if you do one that's the other way 100 <laughs> percent. yeah and like you should probably be doing one of them switch as well yeah, Hondo P. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, we got you. Got to yeah, get back. Yeah, it would be the... still be sick. Like just a three sixty, a back five, and then a switch front five, and then you're landing rag and riding out. Yeah, mm. and you got third. Did you get mad swag or cash prize or what'd you get? No, I think I just got some goggles or something. That's cool though. I always like going to Red Mountain, man. It's 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 fun there. Mm. 
I have such good memories of like just ripping there in mom's Audi with the homies. Dude, yeah, that one mission with Graham won, and then his toe piece blew off. <laughs> and we got we got Timmy Hose on the way back and went to that little island in Castlegar with the suspension bridge. Yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah, that was a good mission. Mm. It's funny. It's a good time. That's like my main interaction with Red Mountain is just their park. It's like. Whitewater mm -hmm. definitely has mm -hmm. better terrain and usually better snow, and it's like higher up, but yeah. Red always has a sick park compared to Whitewater. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although... So much fun. Just a little adventure in the springtime. Yeah, yeah. It's not too far. Can hit the fucking fast food mm -hmm. places. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, get Timmy Hose, get a honey cooler, and fucking ice tap. <laughs> I've been hitting it too much lately, but... That's an, that's mm -hmm. another story. But not not too much, but more mm -hmm. than I'd like. Um fuck, what was I gonna say? Uh oh yeah, oh yeah. I wanted to give credit to Whitewater's Park this year though. It was pretty It was pretty oh, good. Nice. You know, leveling up. Yeah. That's good. What do you remember? I'm glad that they're um, do you remember, like, your first backflip, your very first one? You, maybe you didn't necessarily land it, but you, like, made it around to your feet on the snowboard? Hmm. Hmm. I remember my first ones, I landed on my head. <laughs> In Pau, though? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if I remember the first backflip I landed. I feel like the only advantage we have here without the park is that we can build whatever kind of jump we want, sort of. Like, we don't have that many good landings, but we can build a flip jump easily enough. And then it's a huge advantage. Having power to land in is like, I don't yeah. know, the safety wise, just so you can try whatever, just be like, you know, 99% sure you're mm -hmm. not going to fuck yourself. It's a, that's pretty cool. But but I guess all the yeah. rich, all the rich kids have access to like foam pits and foam pits water and, parks and trampolines, and parks and yeah. shit. And Fuck, that's another business idea. Start one of those here. That that would be awesome. Mm, I'm surprised there isn't one already. I know, right? There's so much like, you know, act like hippie, not hippie, but like granola, <laughs> new age granola families with active kids. <laughs> I like that term, granola. Yeah. Granola families. Yeah. Like or, be, orga organic granola families. Yeah, they all come here, buy like $2 million houses, and shop at co op, and then like snoot their nose mm -hmm. with everyone that lived here for years before them. Yeah, yeah they're all wearing just like Swedish, um, like fucking line, um, Swedish, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, base layers and North Face jackets. <laughs> yeah, Patagucci and mm -hmm. Arcturix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there. A lot yeah. of them are good people, but it's just weird, man. The pretentiousness in this town now, it's its like unbelievable. It really? used, yeah, it used to be so chill. It's just like so much money's moved in, and then everyone that that had money and moved here is now like, whoa, like I found the meaning of life, and like this is the place to be. <laughs> I, you know, like they're like happy here, so right? True. But they don't know how to yeah. fit in, I guess, right away. But I, I feel like it's mellowing out. I, there was like a transition period where it was really bad, and now it's starting to mellow out. Yeah, the rich people that have moved in have kind of like shaken off their fucking anxiety <laughs> energy yeah. from the city. Yeah, they're like assimilating, I think is the word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Culturally. Yeah, that's it. Mm. It's, it's cool exactly. to see. Exactly. It's cool to see. But it, it's weird, it's hard because I'm so biased, right? Like with the, the, ti the timing for that for me, like with COVID and my injury and like stuff going on with Jesse and the baby and stuff. Like I was just kind of in like a pessimistic mindset mm. anyways. And then, and then now just the, with totally. the whole comment of like, Oh, it's not as bad now, <laughs> but it's probably just cause I am. That's your perspective. Yeah. Probably just cause I'm happier. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, it's good for them, but also it's gentrification is sad and it's like, Watching community that have lived here their whole lives have to like um, move to fucking um, Creston or whatever just so they can afford rent. 
Yeah, there's been a few people moving there's to like that. Weimar and Salmo and stuff, but that that's cool because those those communities could use the money more than Nelson. I feel like and. Mhm. Mm yeah, I I agree. Yeah. And like, like I'm playing. Oh, my banana just fell off my toast twice. <laughs> <laughs> sure, dog. I forgot that we got. Put it in my mouth. Oh, you turned your video off too. Nice. Yeah, we don't need it. Mine's on. It is. Oh. Here we go. I think my phone was low battery, so it turned it off. But I got you now. Mhm. Mm Hey, do you wanna? Um, how much time do you have? Um, I got. I'm just gonna get in my work truck. I'll show you my. I'll show you my rig. Okay. Oh, this is my um. This is my sound. This is my sound rig where I practice DJing. Um. There's my little, my KRKs, my DJ setup. Fuck yeah. Got a nice little lamp and a plant. Lamp and a plant? My little, off, my little plant and a lamp. And I cover it with that so it's nice. Um, okay. I got my work pants on. Yeah, dog. Chainsaw protected for safety. <laughs> I gotta wear my high vis because I live in this fucking grandma country where everyone needs to have fucking traffic cones on their head oh yeah not get killed <laughs> oh yeah the bright yellow that's good yeah. what are they what's the what's the word for them isn't there like the servos servos service stations oh okay no that's the wrong one what's the <laughs> What's the word for like the city workers? Um, tradies. Tradies, yeah, fuck. Should have known that one. <laughs> Fucking tradies, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. You're gonna show me your dope ass track? Is it a Hilux? Oh, uh, I've got a Hilux. <laughs> but that's, so your... that's like my, my run around. That Hilux is your fun track? You're gonna show me your work track? I'm just turning off my house right now. Making it before we head out the door. What? <clears throat> turning off your house? So, you know, like, make, turning all the lights off and turning the heat off and... Oh yeah, good boy. Not wasting power. Fuck, it's winter there, isn't it? Look at my, look at my big pumpkin. Hell Yay! yeah. Did you grow that? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time for that shit. I live in a, like, two-bedroom basement suite. <laughs> <laughs> These are my fucked up boots. Oh, yeah. Shit and shit yesterday. What kind? Uh, I think it was a little staffy. Uh, not human? A staffy turd. Not, no, no. no. <laughs> Um, yeah. No, I did. I actually got uppercutted yesterday at work, too. Look, see that? By a tree? Mm, not quite. Oh, and I chipped my teeth. See that? Fuck. You got good dental? Mm -hmm. That's actually a new tooth that I got in India. Did you lose it surfing? Um, no, I, the nerve died. I think it was from doing chin-ups when I was like four years old and then just letting go and just acting myself on the chin-up bar. Oh, and then wow. And then like the, the nerve slowly kind of just died and receded. And then I like before I went to India, I got this abscess and like my whole my head like swelled up above my tooth and I was like KO'd for two days. Couldn't even get out of bed. It was so fucked. So much pain, and um, so yeah, the, the dentist was like, "Yeah, you should probably get a root canal and get crowns and everything." Fuck. And um, I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna spend 15 grand on that when I'm going to India." 
Yeah. I got it done in India for three a three K all these these teeth. Two these ones. Uh, uh, and then these ones uh, uh, replaced. Damn. Three three grand. Yeah. Here's my Hilux. The old dog. Thing's pretty fucking it's been rallied for the last eight years. Oh yeah, it looks sick. Yeah. The Yoda. And here's my blue boy. <laughs> yeah, my blue boy. Diesel. Yeah. Big chipper on the back. Well, this get... is my mini loader. I pick I pick up trees with that bitch. You're getting shaky with the connection. Oh yeah, I'll get off Wi-Fi. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. So how long you got yeah. till you gotta go to work? Well, I'm gonna go right now, but I've got ten minutes, so I'm gonna get to work. Okay. Yeah. But you'll put me on audio, or yeah. Oh, I just got you in my earplugs. My earbuds. Okay, and then you have a like a phone holder. Say, yeah, keep the video running if you can, but you don't have to. <laughs> I can. I can do it. Uh, yeah, I've um, I got a pretty janky setup for all my gear. So this is the this is the chipper hopper where all the fucking trees go into and they get chipped up and sent in the back of the truck. Yeah. But I've also got all my I've also got my all my equipment in there as well too. <laughs> So, but we've got like a board that goes into the, the feed rollers that goes in front of it so all the gear doesn't get sucked in by accident. <laughs> yeah, just in case. <laughs> just in case. I actually had, um, while I was away, um, Dennis, because like when we start the truck and um, the hydraulic lift, this thing, this thing here, it's like it's a hydraulic thing that like lifts the fucking truck off the back. Yeah. But when you start it, the feed roller is going to start going really slowly. Unless you have this kind of like, this one here. You pull this back and it stops the feed rollers from going. But if it's in, it'll, they'll just kind of slowly start rolling. And my fucking climbing gear and um, shit got sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> and like half of it got crushed. And I came back from my holidays. And I was like, what the hell? Dude, you have... Doing? It's funny, you have like the worst of luck sometimes, but then the best of luck like in the end. It, like as far as just like people yeah. I know in my life that are that happen to be like kind of clumsy, like you like get lucky with your clumsiness, I find. I think so. Yeah. I'm just going to stumble my way into a good situation. And like the re I think it's the whole fucking karma deal is you're like a good person and help people out in like more ways than you know just by being like friendly and like genuine uh, yeah i think it it does pay off to be just a, a genuine good good human i was saying sure. i was talking with um buddy skier dan the other there it's come up a couple times just like you know, you know those moments, like for example, when you're just driving, might not, might be in a city, might be in a rural area, whatever, and you just like pass one car, and you make eye contact, basically, and they like throw the peace sign or like just like say what's up with body language. It, yeah, it just. Like Rob, who just go by and just like, hey, bro. <laughs> for just then. Yeah. No way. No way. Are you fucking serious? Well, okay. It was like it wasn't right when you said it, but it was about maybe like five minutes ago. Okay, okay, fair enough, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I'll, I'll get a wave right here, ready? Watch this. Morning! <laughs> Dude, no way. Are you serious? That's the local surf spot. It's west north, bro. Fuck yeah, that's perfect. To go, to go check that. 
All right. The audio is kind of shit now, but I'll finish what I was saying. Um, um, fucking, yeah. But just the little, like, acknowledgement like that can set your day off. Like, let's say it's in the morning. Can set your day off to be, like, a million times better than if you didn't have that just, like, two-second experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, every, every human connection that you can, like, foster brings a nice little, like brain chemistry reaction to your day. Yeah. <laughs> like, ooh, acknowledge someone sees me. This is nice. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, I'm turning it into, a, I'm turning it into a brain chemistry thing, but it's just like, it's just human, human connection means, means the world to people, including me. Yeah, it makes you feel good inside, like you're getting out with the with the brain chemistry thing. It's like it's definitely you know probably a dopamine hit or something oxytocin, oxycotton, oxytocin. Oxytocin. Yeah, oxycotton. <laughs> yeah, oxycotton. That's some pretty good shit. But oxytocin. That's also good. Yeah, but yeah, like it. Just I, a puppy dog or pet a small child. It's a really, it's a very affordable way to. I don't know, yeah, help help somebody out without even really knowing if you're helping them out or not. I feel like, yeah, I feel I, like, um, that's what, that's it, what's... It's helping, helping both parties. Yeah, I feel like if, if I were to, like, have, have a magical wand and could ask the world to do one thing differently, it would be to, like, spend more time and energy doing those little teeny things that don't actually require that much time and energy, but they send, like shockwaves of positivity into the into the universe a hundred percent and um yeah it's just like it's like all those monks that are sitting in their monasteries just kind of meditating and being like just feeling that tranquility in their bodies and then walking out into the streets and just like being next to people and having eye contact like that's that's doing so much for the world I reckon yeah dude well that's a good note the 100 monkey theory theory. enough monkeys feel peace within that's just gonna start fucking rippling into the rest of the population yeah exactly butterfly effect yeah so, what, yeah, the list, what was I getting at before? It was the backflip thing. Do you remember, oh yeah, do you remember the time we built a little jump in Catch Basin and I did my first backflip and like, I don't think I landed, but I came close and then I got all excited and like threw my poles and then you're like, dude, dude, why'd you throw your poles so far? <laughs> Some like snide comment like that. Do, do, do you remember that? Because he almost landed a backflip. I I think so. I didn't take it personally. I loved it. I was like, like keep me in check. Like you weren't like, oh, you're amazing or anything like that. Like you're like instantly like, fucking do better, you <laughs> prick. <laughs> what about your poles? Are you gonna need those? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that, that's that's what it was. That's probably what it was. <laughs> what that? That's another part of you that I've always really loved. Is just like. I don't know, you don't, you always keep people in check in, like, your own little clever, like, humorous way, and you're, you're, like, you're a space cadet, and you forget shit, and you'll leave your fucking, uh, work tools in the chipper, <laughs> but, but, man, yeah. I put them there on purpose, alright? You are, you are smart as fuck, and, like, people don't appreciate it enough, I don't think, I don't know, I haven't lived with you in Australia yet, but, Maybe you have been yeah. feeling the appreciation. Yeah, I think, like, it's something that I've also, like, not seen in myself. Like, I've always kind of had that kind of, I don't know, doubt in my own intelligence. But then, I don't know, it gets, it gets affirmed regularly now where people are like, wow, you have a beautiful mind. Dude, yeah. You might not be the most... You might not be the most practical motherfucker, but you got the like the biggest heart out there. 
Thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, and I don't know. I think that's kind of half the reason why I'm going to uni is to just be like, kind of have a little bit of faith and just back myself a bit. Yeah. And go like, yeah, I can. And, and stretch myself a bit too, you know, just like having to manage the business and do uni. Like, it's, it's like challenging, but I think I need to challenge myself right now. Like, I've had like a few years of crazy times running the business in this kind of mode where I've had eaten free time and I can surf and go on holidays and it's been great, but now I'm feeling the urge to just expand a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever you do, whatever you do, you're gonna rock it. But I think that's a great path, like Chinese medicine. You're working with hands-on with people; they can feel your energy. Like I think that's yeah, that's another big part of it is you just have really good energy and you put people at ease. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it's like actually something that I've heard a lot from people. I think that's kind of like a big reason why I went into it. Like I think I was reading something that was like. Your soul's like your your soul's purpose will be reflected back to you. And like just look at what your natural gift is. Like what people keep. What's a, what's a beautiful gift that kind of comes naturally to you? Yeah, fuck and I, it. And I just had it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You're you're breaking up. You're speaking real good shit, but I gotta cut you off, and we'll we'll continue at another d t day. Should be, it should be pretty good coming up after this little section. Oh yeah, you you are a bit better now. Okay, sorry to cut you off. Continue with your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just saying that like your you do have everyone has a natural gift and it'll be reflected back at you. Like you might not know what it is, but other people see it and to find something that like. It's complimented by her gifts is probably like a good way to go in terms of coming up with what you want to do in the world. And I think, yeah, that's something that I've, I've been noticing a lot over the past few years is people just keep coming to me and like talking about really deep stuff that I might not normally, they might not normally divulge to people. And, be, and then I think that's a reflection of like, people just feeling comfortable around me. Hell yeah. Yeah, and I think, like, um, that's gonna be really helpful in, like, a healing practice where people can just be open and and just kind of let, let like, their communication be fluid and, and like, talk through shit. Like, I think that's why Chinese medicine pulls me so much is it's so holistic in, in the approach of like emotions on the body and how that affects the physical form not just the emotional health fuck yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty keen yeah man I've, I have a lot of respect for that I don't know field like I, I'm pretty judgmental and like opinionated and I think I there's definitely a time where I was like uh, Chinese medicine like sounds hokey or whatever but I've, yeah. I've, I've had like encounters with it and talked to people about it, and yeah, it sounds pretty fucking dope. Luckily, I've never had to resort to it, other than like a bit of acupuncture. But, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I reckon that situation you were in with your neck, it probably would have been pretty helpful. Like, I think this, yeah, especially acupuncture, it just brings. It brings like blood flow and awareness to parts of your body that you can't actually stimulate because of like immobility or like, not being able to like like a broken bone. Like I think you remember when I broke my leg. Yep. Um, that was probably the doctor was like that was probably cab Oops. five, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was actually it was a it was a five. I we tried to do a reverse tail grab with it as well. Just like in the comp. I was actually practicing for another comp. <laughs> so I wanted to stop a five like that. Yeah. With and, that grab. And then you, you use Chinese medicine to speed the healing process? No, the thing is I didn't, like, cause I, was, I was just listening to the doctors and they're like, no, you can't, like, you can't actually move your leg. 
just don't don't move it at all. Don't put any weight on it. And I listened to them, and I was really kind of like adamant to listen to the doctors. And it was probably like I don't know, maybe four or five months with like no signs of healing. And I was like, this is fucked. Like they're like, yeah, look, you're probably gonna have to get surgery. Like we'll give it like a few more weeks. And if you don't have any um, signs of healing, then you should do surgery. And then I was like, all right, fuck it. So I just like, I cut my cast off and I got one. It's like um, pump, air pump kind of plastic wrap cast. I don't even know what they're called. Anyway. Air cast. Yeah, air cast. Air cast. Yeah. So I started putting weight on it and moving it around more and just kind of like the whole act of just like waking my leg up and and using it like sent blood to the area and literally within two weeks it was 80 percent healed damn yeah i I was gonna i was gonna say earlier it seems like that's a big part of chinese medicine um where you're where it's like you're kind of like nudging your body and like your system your body systems to like kick into gear you don't want to overload them but you kind of like like with the leg like if you don't use it at all your body thinks that it's like not even there but if you're putting a little bit of pressure a little bit more every day every week whatever using it like up until the point of uncomfortability then then your body knows like hey that's where i gotta be like focusing exactly and that's what acupuncture does it like it basically aw- awakens that like part of your body to like trigger your um trigger your body to put more like blood flow to that space which actually creates like brings nutrients and oxygen to the area so that it heals properly yeah yeah and that's what they do in china they all have air casts and they get acupuncture at least once a week and their bones heal like twice as fast in china as they do oh yeah that's like a known statistic yeah. pretty much i think it's like two two to three weeks is most most breaks like most standard breaks will heal in, in China with the use of acupuncture. What? That's crazy, man. I... Fuck. But it's like, it's not cheap. And like, people have to pay like a hundred bucks for like one session. Right, so, yeah. Our healthcare yeah. system is <laughs> fucked and we can't even say shit compared to America about that. But like, yeah, just the <laughs> fact, just the fact that we're so stuck in the whole like treat the treat the symptoms not the not the actual underlying issues is it's just insanity yeah i know i know Fuck. but hopefully like that's one thing that i want to try and do is like be be part of the um kind of effort to bring like eastern philosophy and eastern medicine practice into into like the western systems yeah you don't like covered medicare and people that can't afford it can actually have access to it yeah you don't want to use that you don't want to use that r word but that's what it is it just as soon as you say it then everyone's like oh whatever keep talking out your ass fucking hippie um can you say it can you say the r word yeah i can say it revolution Well, you, you got you, you got my back. You you had it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um, it's just gonna it's if it just it just makes logical sense. Like, if we had that approach, we would be saving so much money because there'd be, be like half the amount of people in hospitals like using taxpayers' money because people would actually be proactive about their health. Yeah. Rather than. Alright, I'll, 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 sh- I'll show you my, uh, my boys. Okay. Ready? Yeah. You're on camera. Hold on. Say hi! What's oh, up? Yeah, that's Danny and Taj. Woo! Taj, I'm my mate, Tristan. Yo! Yeah, yeah. What's boy, up? Still, nice to meet you. Hey, Fuck yeah! How good is it to have Miles as a boss? How you doing, bro? Oh, you filming? Yeah, he's yeah. Filming me. He's, he's practicing for podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are. Be surfing, nice. It works. Fuck yeah! These boys would rather be surfing, and I don't blame them. <laughs> God damn. I would too. 
Bunch of beauties. Yeah, they're a bunch of cuties. Alright, uh, oh, the black toffee cues are flying by. Really? Yeah. Really, red tail one. That's a good omen. That means we meant to go surfing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I know, I want to go surfing too. We'll just punch this day out and maybe we'll get one in the Arvo. <laughs> Alright, I gotta go. Yeah. But much love, brother. That was sick. Send me a couple surf pics if you go in the afternoon. Okay, will do. Love you. Love you. <laughs> See ya. Bye.